Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. We do so by learning few new words every day. Today is our day number 38. Let's see what we have for today. Day 38. On day number 35, I believe it was. Let me check. On day number 35, We learned the word voracious and the noun of this is, this is an adjective. This was 35. On D35, we learned the word voracious and we also learned that the noun of voracious is voracity. Voracity, V V O. Today we're going to learn a word with a different spelling. Are we going to erase this thing? Are we going to leave this? This is the noun. This is the noun of the word voracious. And if you don't know what voracious is, just go and watch the video for day 35, and you will learn it. The word that we want to learn today, the word that I want to start out today with, is. Veracity, V E as opposed to V O. You see? V O. Veracity. Veracity. It just means okay, truth. Truthfulness. Truthful and truthfulness is a noun. If you're being truthful, that's an adjective. If I'm being truthful, I'm telling you the, what is true. I'm, I'm not lying to you. I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. And if I'm being truthful, I have truthfulness. Similarly, veracity is. Sim similarly, I I I have my statement or I have veracity in my statement truthfulness it just means honesty accuracy if I'm being accurate I have accuracy if I'm being honest I have honesty honesty is a noun if I'm being truthful I have truthfulness and the veracity again is a noun I do not know what the adjective of veracity would be I did not bother to look it up. Veracity is the noun. It just means... Oh, here's the adjective. There it is. So again, if I am voracious, Voracious. Don't confuse it with voracious. It's a different word. Voracious and voracious. As you can see, they are exact same word with one letter changed. Instead of E, we have an O here. There's a different word. We learned it on day number 35. One more time, I'm reminding you. If you want to learn the word voracious, I'm not going to go into it right now. Go and watch day 35. Just type in the tag, Kishwani Prep dash vocab dash day 35, and you will see the word voracious and voracity. Today, we're learning about voracious, not voracious, not voracious, but voracious and veracity, not veracity. So if you if you have the veracity, if you're being voracious, you have veracity. If you're being accurate, you have accuracy. 
If you're being honest, you have honesty. If you're being truthful, you have truthfulness. So these are the nouns, these are the adjectives. Voracious, truthful. Honest, accurate, voracious. These are all adjectives. And these are all nouns. Voracious, truthfulness, honesty, and accurate. And to here, one, two, three, and four. That's it. Let's move on. And learn a new word. The word, the next word that we want to learn is, that's it, I'm done with this thing. One more time I'm reminding you, do not confuse these, these, this pair with this pair. Voracity and voracity. Voracious and voracious. Voracious, voracious. The next word we want to learn is tautology. What is a tautology? Tautologies are very annoying things because if somebody states a tautology, let me first give you the meaning. A tautology is something that is true by definition. By definition. A tautologies that are annoying, I find them very annoying when the students state a tautology, they are knowing because tautologies are things that are true by definition. So if you, so if you state a tautology, you're never going to be wrong. Whatever it is that you said, you're always, always, always right. But the problem is, you're not saying anything. You're just needlessly repeating what I said and saying it in a different way. So that's not the meaning of the word. Not the meaning of the word. It just means to needlessly repeat. To... To... Needlessly repeat, needlessly repeat an idea or an state or a statement by using different words. So if you're repeating the same idea or the same statement, but you're employing different words, you may think that you're telling me something new, but you're not. You're just repeating what I said and saying it in a different way. It's a tautology. Tautologies are always true. That's what that's what tautology means. That, that is something true by definition. Let me give you a couple of simple examples of, of a tautological statement. Tautological would be the adjective. For example, if I ask you, why is the room why is that room dark? To which you proudly to which you proudly answer, because the lights are not on in that room. Well, I bloody well know the lights are not on in that room. I know that. So when I ask you why is that room dark, what I was asking you is that why the lights have not been turned on in that room. So to probably turn around and tell me because the lights are not on, it doesn't tell me anything new. I already know the lights are not on. That's why it's so dark in there. Which is why I ask you why is it dark? Why weren't you here yesterday? Because I had to go somewhere else. Because I was somewhere else. Of course you were bloody well somewhere else. That's why you were not here today. I know you were somewhere else because you were not here today. Why weren't you here yesterday? Because I was somewhere else. But I was somewhere else. It's a tautological statement. So when you tell me that I was somewhere else and therefore I wasn't here yesterday, you're not telling me, you're not telling me something that, uh, the, that uh, you're going to be wrong in. you always, always, always going to be right. Whenever you state a tautology, you're always right, but you don't say anything. 
you don't say you don't uh, you don't convey any new information how can you be wrong when you t when I ask you why weren't you here yesterday you said because I was somewhere else of course you look you're you're right in that statement but you haven't told me anything at all the reason I find it annoying sometimes when I'm teaching the SAT course particularly in a classroom and there's a room full of kids and there's always a genius in the back row uh, and uh, I'm about to solve a problem on the blackboard particularly a math problem and I, before I solve, start solving the problem I ask them what kind of problem is this what I want to hear from them at that stage in the game for those, of, for those students who have been paying attention in the lecture is they should be able to recognize whether the problem that I'm about to do is supposed to be, is considered an easy question or a medium question or a hard question so you can tell from the layout of the exam before you start solving the problem in the SAT not the GRE or the GMAT on the SAT which is still paper and pencil exam the GRE and GMAT are no longer paper and pencil exam. SAT is still paper and pencil. And in a paper and pencil exam, you can very easily tell how difficult the question is supposed to be based on its location of the problem in the section. So when I ask them, what kind of, prob what kind of problem is this? And what I expect for somebody in the class to tell me, it's a medium question, it's a hard question. Instead, there's always a genius in the back row who raises his hand or her hand and proudly tells me that it's an SAT question or it's a math question. They're never wrong. They're always right. Whatever they say, they're always right. But it doesn't say anything. Of course, it's a bloody well SAT question because that's what we are here for the SAT prep course. Of course, it's a math question because we are doing math right now. So that's why they're so annoying. I find them extremely annoying, as you can tell from, from the way I go on and on about it. So avoid stating tautology. They are very annoying. They're very tedious. And you might think that you're being very smart. You're being very clever because you said something extraordinary you did not you just repeated the same idea that the other person just said in a different way telling me the same thing used by using a different word is not a new information it's the same information stated differently okay that's what tautology is it's the same information same information stated differently Edward differently or in a different manner same statement stated in a different manner tautology that's it that was the end of that and and the adjective would be tautological tautological tautology let's go on then let's learn the next word i need the room so i need to raise everything so again it means something that is true by definition needlessly repeating something an idea or a statement by using different words or stating the same information same information is stated differently. Stating the same information is stating the same information differently. That's it. Let's learn another word which is related to the word tautology and the word is axiom. something an axiom is something an axiom is something that does not require proof why doesn't it require proof because because it is taken as true by definition. I think I just misspelled the word definition. That's it. For example, 2 plus 2 is 4. It's axiomatic. That statement was axiomatic. This is a noun. This is adjective. Don't 
tautology that we just learned was a noun and tautological would be adjective. So tautology and axiom they are related. An axiom, as I said before, is something a statement that is true that is taken as true by definition because that is how it is defined. Nobody is going to ask you to prove that there are 24 hours in a day. Why? Because that is how we define a day. We have taken a certain period of uh, time and we divide it up into uh, 24 equal parts. Had we divided up into 100 equal parts, we would have had 100 hours. We have divided up into 24 parts. So 24 hours makes a day. You do not need to prove it. It doesn't require proof because it is axiomatic. It is an axiom that there are 24 hour, hours in a day. Nobody is going to ask you to prove that there are 60 seconds in a minute. Why? Because that is the definition of a minute. Because an axiom is something that does not require proof because that is the definition of it. Tautology is something that is true by definition. Something, something that is true something that is true by definition is a tautology, it's an axiom. It is true by definition. You do not need to prove that there are 60 seconds in a minute, because that is how a minute is defined. It is axiomatic, it's an axiom. Do you understand? Enough of that, I keep repeating it. Finally, so we learned the word So we learned the word tautology, I believe that's how you spell it. We learned the word axiom. And let's finally learn the other word, which is maxim. M M A XIM maxim. These are all synonyms. They are all related. They all mean the same thing. A maxim again is something that is true by definition. That is how something is defined. A maxim is something that is axiomatic, that is tautological. Do you understand? That was it. That's all I have for today. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor for GRE, GMAT, SAT, and TOEFL. If you need help in your preparation for any of these tests, go to my website. Or go to any of these website addresses, that is. Prep for GRE.com, prep for GMAT.com, prep for SAT.com, or prep for TOEFL.com. And send me an email, and I'll be more than, ha more than happy to help you. You can also go to KeshwaniPrep.com and send me an email from there also. You'll get, help, you'll get hold of me from, this, from that email, uh, from that website address as well. Alright? Thank you.